In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the concept of a combination. And an arrangement in which the order is not important is called a combination. If you have the same objects and you switch the order around, like um, let's say the letters, you're using the letters A, B, and C. If you switch them around and say B, C, A, it's still the same combination. So if you have the same objects, just switching the order does not make a different combination. It makes a different permutation, but it would be the same combination. And let's take a look at that in an example. Let's say we had a combination lock and a safe. And this word uh, isn't really the greatest word to use for this, but they are normally called combination lock. This word has very little to do with, with what a combination is. Okay, so you've got a lock on a safe. And let's say the lock was 2311635 If you were to uh, look at a different safe, with the combination 6, 43, 11, 23, 27, 35. Notice it's the same six numbers, but we've changed the order. So this, this would actually be uh, a, a safe um, combination to have on a safe. Now, there are examples of different permutations. That's why I said this word isn't a very good choice for this. Um, so same numbers, but in a different order, makes a different permutation. But these would actually be called, in mathematics, the same combination. Because a combination is just a group. If you change the order, it's still the same group of things. Now, however, let's say you were playing the Lotto 649. And if you're not from Canada, the Lotto 649 is a, ga is a lottery where you pick six numbers from 1 to 49. So there's 49 numbers, and you're picking six of them. Uh, you can do that yourself. You can actually fill it out on a ticket, or you can just get the, the machine to generate a randomly uh, chosen uh, group of six numbers from 1 to 49 for you. So let's say that you decide to play the numbers 6, 11, 23, 27, 35, and 43. So same numbers from up here. There's only one ticket with those six numbers. There's not a different ticket with those six numbers. Um, because they're always listed in just they're just listed in order from smallest to greatest. Now, what I mean by this, I, I don't mean that there's only one ticket that anyone could buy. Um, you could, an individual could buy a ticket with these, and another person could buy a ticket with the same numbers on it. But they're not considered to be two different combinations. There's two different tickets, maybe, and though if if uh, that ticket was the one that was drawn, those two people would share the prize. So um, if you were to write out all the different, let's say you wrote out all the different uh, tickets with all the different six numbers that could be possibly listed, well, uh, we wouldn't list this a second or more time. Okay, So there's only, that's what I mean by there's only one ticket, although two or three or four people could actually have a ticket with the same numbers on. That's possible. Now, so the example is how many Lotto 649 tickets are possible? If you were to buy them all, how many are there? Now, the permutation 49 permute 6 is this really big number, uh, 10,068,347,520. Now, uh, that's not the answer. Okay, We're, we're going to use this to find the answer. Each set of six numbers, like the set from the last page, has been counted six factorial times because there's six factorial or six permute six, which is six factorial, a uh, number of ways to select to arrange six objects in different orders. So while each group of six numbers should be only counted once, they're actually counted six factorial times too many. So in order to get the number of uh, uh, lot of 649 tickets, we would take this 10 billion number and we would divide it by 6 factorial. 6 being, of course, the number of uh, numbers you're selecting here. And if we divide that out, you get a number a little under 14 million. There's 13,983,816 possible lot of 6 different lot of 649 tickets. I'll use the word unique. There's that many unique lot of 649 tickets possible. So uh, here's a definition on this page. A combination of n different objects taken r at a time is a selection of r of the objects, and it says without regard to order. Okay, So switching the order around does not make a different combination. That does, however, make a different permutation. Okay, Permutations, uh, if you change the order with the same number of objects, you get a different permutation. And that is important in some problems. The total number of such combinations denoted, and there's actually several different uh, um, 
conventions here. Uh, one of them is uh, C and then bracket N comma R, close the bracket. So uh, this is the number of objects. This is the size of the group we're picking. Another common uh, symbol is to write the N first and then the C and then the R. And uh, another one so here's a couple of different, so one way to write it, uh, or a, a different than this, and you'll see this on uh, calculators sometimes, it's like this. And another way is actually, it kind of looks like a matrix. This is another uh, notation that's used sometimes too. So those are the uh, three most common ways to write combinations. Now a combination of n objects take an R at a time, is, and this is a formula to calculate this using factorial notation, uh, is N factorial over R factorial and then N minus R factorial in the denominator. Kind of looks a lot like if you've seen the permutation one before. The only difference in the permutation one is it's just N factorial or over N minus R factorial. In the permutation one there's no additional R factorial multiplied in the denominator. Where, of course, R has to be no some number between 0 and N. Uh, your, group, your group, of course, could be as little as 0, like picking no objects. There's only one way to do that, of course. Uh, and it could be up to N. Uh, if you, you could have uh, you know, 49 objects and be selecting 49 at a time. The symbol uh, N choose R is often read N choose R, or a combination of N objects selected R at a time. It's a longer way to say it, but N choose R is a short way to write it or read it. Okay, a few examples. A standard deck has 52 playing cards. So how many poker hands are possible? Poker hand is just five cards selected from the 52, so no restrictions whatsoever. So there would be 52 choose five, and this is a combination because uh, holding the same cards in a different order doesn't make a different poker hand. Okay, so uh, for example, if you had two twos and three kings, and this actually relates more to question B here, it would be the same hand as if you listed a king and then a two and then another king and then another two and then a king, if you held it that way in your hand. Okay, that's going to be the same five cards, so uh, we wouldn't consider it to be a different hand. So 52 choose 5 is 2,598,960, so there's almost 2.6 million possible different unique poker hands. In B, it says, how many full house poker hands possible? Well, this is what a full house is. It's a pair and then three of a kind. And, of course, they can't all be the same because there's only four of any one denomination. Denomination are whether they're twos or threes or fours or jacks or queens or aces or whatever. Now, let's uh, talk about the pair first. Uh, we've got uh, two of a kind. There are four... Uh, cards in each denomination. There's four twos or four sevens or, or whatever denomination you're talking about. And to select the pair, uh, there's four choose two ways to select them. So for example, there's a two of spades, a two of hearts, a two of diamonds, a two of clubs. That's the four in that uh, denomination of twos. And I'm selecting two of those four. So th that's the number of ways you can select the, uh, uh, the pair. So it could be two of spades, two of hearts, two of spades, two of clubs, two of hearts, two of diamonds. There are four choose two ways to do those. And for each of those, so that's the two of a kind, for each of those, there are four choose three ways to select the three of a kind. So here's I chosen kings here. There's four kings. There's these three plus the king of hearts. And so there's four cards to select from, and we're choosing three at a time. So there's uh, four choose three ways to select the three of a kind. Now, and this next part is a permutation because, uh, okay, there's 13 different denominations and we're selecting for a full house two of them because there's a pair and then there's a three of a kind. So there's two different sets of cards, a pair and three of a kind. And the reason this is a permutation is because uh, if we chose, okay, I've chosen the, the pair to be twos here and the three of a kind to be kings. If we were to do it with the same ones, but make, let's say, the, the twos, the three of a kind, and two kings, then that would be a different poker hand, a different full house, actually. So uh, that's why this is a permutation. So there's 13 different denominations and we're selecting two of them. Some people might, instead of writing 13 permute two here, write times 13... Some people might actually write instead times, there's 13 ways to select, let's say, the pair, times 
there's 12 ways to select the three of a kind because once we've selected the pair, once we've selected the pair, there's only 12 denominations left for the three of a kind, or or vice versa. But 13 times 2, sorry, 13 times 12 is the same as 13 per mute 2, so it is the same thing. So that's how you select two denominations from 13. Now, 4 choose 2 is 6, 4 choose 3 is 4, and 13 choose 2 is 156. So there are uh, 3,744 different full house hands possible. Now, especially when the combination has not too many numbers, so I'm going to show you a shortcut for evaluating um, without the factorials, and we'll use it in the examples in the pre on the next page. So, n choose r uh, is, on, on top we have n factorial, which is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and you keep on going down. Like 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, etc. All the way down to 1. Now, in the middle somewhere, we would have terms like n minus r plus 1, and then 1 less than it is n minus r, and then if I wanted to write the next, next one, it would be n minus r minus 1. You keep on subtracting 1 to get the next term all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1 at the very end. Well, this whole uh, amount that's multiplied from n minus r down to 1 could be called n minus r factorial because it's the product of all the numbers from n minus r down 1, down 1 at a time, all the way down to 1. So we could replace this with an n minus r factorial. So that's what this next line is. Now, notice that we have an n minus r factorial here in the numerator and an n minus r factorial in the denominator. So we could actually divide those out to, to simplify this expression. And so n choose r is actually equal to the product of the uh, numbers starting at n, and then 1 less than n, and then 1 less than that again, all the way down to, and the last product here is the difference between n and r plus 1. And then it's divided by r factorial, the uh, number on the end here. Now, that may look like it's long and complicated, but you can actually use that, especially if the r isn't too big, if there aren't too many numbers, in your, or the size of your group isn't too large, as a shortcut for evaluating a combination. The only difference in permutations, again, is that there's no r factorial. But if this was a permutation of n objects taken r at a time, it would just be the product from n down to n minus r plus 1. Now, there are r terms here, r being the size of your group. So that's how many numbers we're actually multiplying here. So for example, let's say we were, and we'll do more of these in the next page. Uh, let's say we're evaluating the combination 12 choose 3. This 3 here means it's a group of 3. And so this formula means that would, the first number is 12, and then the next number is 11, and actually the next number is 10. That's the last one, because there are supposed to be 3 numbers. So 12 times 11 times 10 over 3 factorial. Remember, the denominator was the r factorial, the size of the group factorial. So 3 factorial is equal to 6. So I could actually, without a calculator, if you, you can do a little arithmetic in your head, you could divide the 6 into the 12 twice. And so this is actually just 2 times 11 times 10. That's 22 times 10 would be 220. So 12 choose 3 is 220. So it's, it's, a, it's a way to, to evaluate that without the factorials. So uh, example number three. Now, 8 choose 0 means we have eight objects, and we're selecting none of them. Okay, So there's only one way you can do that. Any number choose 0 is always equal to 1, because there's only one way you can not select any of the objects. So n choose 1 is always equal to 1. Uh, for b here, 12 choose 1. Now, this 1 means is a group of 1. So there's only one number in the product. To kind of use the word product loosely on the top here. It's just a 12, and then it would be divided by 1 factorial. So this is really just 12 divided by 1, which, of course, equals 12. So that leads us to uh, uh, hypothesize that n choose 1 is n. In fact, that is true. Anything choose 1 is that number. So, for example, 100 choose 1 would be 100. Now, C, D, and E are more um, like what that formula is from uh, about in the previous page. 7 choose 2 would be 7 times 6, and there are two numbers on top. 
Okay, so that's why it's just 7 times 6. To get the last number, uh, again from the previous page, it's 7 minus 2 plus 1. 7 minus 2 is 5, plus 1 would be 6, so the last number in that product is 6, divided by 2 factorial. Well, this is just 42 divided by 2. 2 factorial equals 2, so that equals 21. For D, 10 choose 4 would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. There are four numbers, and also to get what the last number is, you could go 10 minus 4 is 6, plus 1 makes 7. If you don't do plus the plus 1, you've actually gone 1 too far. Uh, you're including 6 in this, and, and there's not supposed to be a 6 because there's only four numbers, 10, 9, 8, and 7 multiplied. <coughs> Excuse me, over 4 factorial. Now, 4 factorial equals 24, so we could just do a little uh, d uh, dividing here. Um, three, uh, 8 goes into itself um, once and 8 goes into 24 three times and then we could divide the 3 into the 9. Uh, 3 goes into itself once, 9 three times so uh, the denominator is 1 here now. Really, We really just have 10 times 3 times 7 so that's a product of 21 times 10 would be 210. And the last one 6 choose 3 uh, be 6 times 5 times 4 so three numbers. Again if you want to check what the last number is 6 minus 3 is 3 plus 1 makes 4, so the last number is 4, over 3 factorial. Now, 3 factorial is equal to 6, so you could divide those 6's out, and so you're just left with 5 times 4 over 1, so that's just 20. And that's the end of the tutorial.